New tonight, Trump's latest target, the president of the United Auto Workers, the target of two verbal assaults within hours of each other from the former president. Trump posting today in part, quote, Sean Fain is a weapon of mass destruction on auto workers and the automobile manufacturing industry in the United States. All auto workers should all caps vote for Trump. Just hours earlier, Trump bashed Fain by saying this. He's a real all caps stiff who is selling the automobile industry right into the big, powerful hands of China. Get rid of this dope and vote for DJT. Trump admitting his initial attack was because of this interview where Fain did not hold back in explaining why he has chosen to endorse Biden instead of Trump. Donald Trump has a history of serving himself and standing for the billionaire class, and that's contrary to everything that working class people stand for. Sean Fain is out front now. So... Sean, Donald Trump says you are a weapon of mass destruction, that you are a stiff, and that you are a dope, said all those uh, things today. What do you even, <laughs> how do you even respond to that? Well, thanks for having me, Aaron. You know, first off, you know, the weapon of mass destruction against the automotive industry has been two words, <laughs> corporate greed. Uh, you know, this is Trump. Trump always resorts to name calling because the facts are very clear, and he doesn't want to talk about the truth. You know, he talks about what, during his presidency, the phrase came out, alternative facts, or what we all call lies. Um, he wants to make this election about anything but real issues. And, you know, this isn't about me or Donald Trump. I, I don't care what Donald Trump says about me. I don't care what he thinks about me. I care about facts. And, and the facts are very clear for the large majority of Americans. The working class people have been left behind by Trump's billionaire class, by the billionaire buddies. And the economy that only works for the benefit for the wealthy. And you know, you look, 1970, I read this the other day from the Economic Policy Institute. Yep. From 1979 to 2022, the top 0.1% of wage earners, wages increased 344%. The bottom 90% increased 32%. So this is an economy that Trump dreams of. This is what he wants. He doesn't give a damn about working class people, and that's what this is all about. All right, so one thing that he is connecting with in some way uh, is, is a sentiment that at least has grown within unionized households, right? And that is a shift over time politically. Um, you know, you've admitted this yourself, Sean. You said there are rank and file members of the UAW that Trump does appeal to. Mm -hmm. uh, our Harry Anton was looking at some numbers. And what I'm referring to is a, is a shift over time in overall union member vote towards the Republican, right? Still, still plus Democrat, okay? But there's been a shift, right, Sean? Mm -hmm. So in 1948, it was 62 points, uh, plus 62 Democrat. 1992, that had been cut in half to 31. And by 2020, it was down to 22% uh, advantage for Democrat. Still an advantage, but that's obviously a massive erosion. Um, why do you think it is that, that many of your members do not see this the way that you do? Well, look, I'll say this is a, it's been a masterful plan by the, by the billionaire class and the corporate class. I mean, they, over the last 40, 50 years of our lives, have played the greatest game they always play, and that's divide and conquer. They divide the masses over single issues. And meanwhile, they run away with all the money, all the profits, and uh, things get worse for us. You know, what we have to do as organized labor, we have to lead the fight, and we have to lead the dialogue with facts. And that's why our contract campaign was so, success so successful with the big three. That's why 75% of Americans sided with us in that fight, because we were focused on, on the things that matter most to working class people. Wages, better wages, uh, you know, retirement security, uh, health care, better health care for everybody, and getting our time back. You know, it's shameful through all of this. You know, working class people are working harder and longer than we ever have. They're working seven days a week, 12 hours a day, working multiple jobs, and they're scraping to get by. That's the economy Donald Trump loves. That's the economy that the billionaire class loves, and it doesn't work for working class people. And I think when we focus on the core issues, Yep. that matter most to working class people, we'll see a difference in how the election goes. So, Sean, I know that um, you did not, uh, you had ruled out meeting with Trump, but the Teamsters Union is not doing that. They've got 1.3 million members, right? Massive union. Trump is meeting with union members and leaders this week. There's a, a, a event he's hosting on Wednesday. Earlier this month, he met with the head of the Teamsters Union at Mar-a-Lago. Do you have any feel for how this is going? Do you know the head of the Teamsters Union? Do you think that he could be getting their endorsement? 
Look, I've talked to Sean O'Brien. I respect Sean O'Brien. He's a he's a good leader, and and look, they've had good success in that union, done great things. And uh, you know, I'm not going to try to even speak for what their decision is. All I can speak for is from, from our perspective and what we've seen and the facts we've seen. And it's really clear for us. It's a very clear picture when you put the two candidates side by side. I mean, you go back to the economic recession. Joe Biden stood with the, the American worker. Donald Trump blamed the American worker. He blamed the workers for everything that was wrong with the big three back then. You know, Joe Biden gave us a path forward. You know, you go to when Trump was president in 2019, Lordstown Assembly Plan in Ohio was slated to close. Trump blamed the local president, told people don't sell your houses and did nothing. In, in 2019, when GM was on strike, what did Donald Trump then the president say? He didn't say anything, he didn't do anything. You know, in 2023, Joe Biden, when we were on strike, he came out and stood with the workers. He joined us on the picket line. You know, Belvedere Assembly Plant in Illinois yep. was slated for closure in 2023. That community was written off for dead. Joe Biden worked with us to not just get one plant, we got that plant revived and another plant to be built there and, and, and save the community. So there's a, there's a stark contrast in these candidates. Joe Biden has spent a lifetime serving others and serving the working class. Donald okay. Trump spent a lifetime serving himself.